Hello all. In this small session, we are going to discuss about protocols used at various layers of TCP IP model. And then we will move on to discuss about the data link layer functionalities. We have seen that TCP IP protocol stack uses four layers. In this diagram, we can see that on the left side, there are OSI layers and on the right side, we can see corresponding TCP IP protocol stack layers. Let us start from the lowermost layer. Lowermost layer, which is host to network layer, supports various protocols which are supported by physical and data link layer of OSI model. These protocols are not specified because almost all the protocols are supported by TCP IP model depending on the underlying network. For various applications, there might be different protocols that are to be used. So it depends on the application requirements, which lower layer protocols should be used for TCP IP protocol stack. Moving on, the upper layer, which corresponds to network layer, we have a main protocol called as IP, that is internet protocol. There are supporting protocols as well, that is ICMP, IGMP, RARP and ARP. We are going to study each one of them in detail in various units. The next layer, which is transport layer, we have three main protocols there, TCP, UDP and SCTP. The main protocol used are TCP and UDP. However, for some applications, SCTP is also used. And the uppermost layer, which is application layer, we can see list of various protocols, various applications running there, SMTP, FTP, HTTP, DNS, SNMP, Telnet, and so on. We might have heard some of these names. In the fifth unit, we are going to study these applications in detail as well. Let me tell you that purpose of showing this slide to you is just to get acquainted with the names of the protocols which are used in TCP IP model and to know at which layer that protocol is operating. You can observe here that the main protocols used at the network and transport layers are IP and TCP respectively. And so this protocol stack is named after these important protocols, TCP, IP. Moving forward, we have a data link layer whose functionalities are line discipline, flow control, error control, framing, and physical addressing. Right now we are interested in one of the applications which is known as line discipline. What line discipline is? Line discipline gives an idea, gives the decision about who should send the data. For example, there are four stations connected to the same cable. So they are sharing the cable, sharing the media. If suppose station one and three both wish to send the data simultaneously. Due to the shared media, it is not possible and hence it is necessary to give the decision who should send the data one or three because if we don't do that, then the data from one and three will be collided and the whole lot of data will be destroyed. So line discipline is one important function of data link layer here onwards, from next session onwards, we are going to study the protocols which take care of this line discipline and those protocols are known as MAC protocols. MAC stands for Media Access Control. Who should gain the access? Who should gain the control of the media? That is taken care by 
MAC protocols. I hope the idea of MAC protocol is clear, but where does this MAC protocol lie in the TCP IP protocol stack? For that, we can go to the next slide. We can see data link layer over here. And we can see that data link layer is divided into two parts. Lower part, which is near to the physical layer, is called as media access control layer, that is MAC layer. And the upper part, which is LLC, link layer control. Here, line discipline is the function that is carried out by MAC protocol. And all other functions of the data link layer are carried by LLC. As I have told you, we are going to study MAC protocols in detail here onwards. So now we have come to an end of this session. The end session question is, if the stations are connected in a mesh topology, is the MAC technique necessary at the data link layer? We know what mesh topology is. We know what kind of connectivity between stations we have in the mesh topology. Depending on that, you can give this answer whether media access control techniques are to be used for network in mesh topology or not. In the next session, we are going to study MAC protocols in detail. Thank you.